Welcome to Shonen Flop Chibi, a first impressions mini episode where we talk about the first chapter of the series that we will be covering in depth next week. I'm Jordan, and with me today, as usual, is my lovely co-host, David. Say hi, David! Actually, say bonjour, David! Hey, bonjour, je m'appelle David, enchanté. You know Spanish? Italian, actually. Oh, nice. Oh. Freaking dingus. I was actually reading a New York article where they were like, real Italian food doesn't use garlic, you know. What? They were like, southern Italians don't use it. And I'm like, tomatoes aren't even indigenous to Italy. They're not. <laughs> it was the stupidest thing I'd ever seen in my entire life. God, it blew my mind when that when I found that out because like I went to Italy and had this really old pizza. The pizza itself had just been made that night, but it was a very old recipe. I should clarify. Yes, yes. And so like a year later, I was talking to someone like, "Yeah, I had this pizza recipe. It was like a thousand years old." And they're like, "Dude, tomatoes were not in Italy a thousand years ago." And I was just like, "Whoa, oh, I'm so stupid." By the way, old school Italian pizza, a plus, ruined pizza for me in yeah. America. But anyway, David, what are we reading? Today. It's a good thing I just ate, because we are reading Hungry Marie. Oh yeah! By Ryue Tamura. Yep. Do you know what else he's done that we've covered on Shonen Flop? Fuck, I, I knew, but I forgot. Hard Boiled Cop and Dolphin. Yeah! Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Alright, shout out to Joey for being just a rad dude. Yeah, Joey, shout out to you. No reason in particular. <laughs> well, he's the one who suggested this to you. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case people didn't get it. Yeah. yeah. So Jordan, though, how long did this series run for? This series ran from February 27th through October 16th, 2017. And it ran for 33 chapters in four volumes. It's funny because now I see 33 chapters and think, wow, this series went on for a while. Right? Now that we've had the U19 club in our life. Yeah, like, oh, wow, so this series clearly wasn't seen as shitty enough to get cancelled in under 20 chapters, so, or under 19, <laughs> but, uh, still got cancelled, uh, in less than double that, though. It's, uh, part of the U38 club, a very exclusive club. <laughs> I would classify this as slightly less popular than One Piece. Yes, but more popular than Naruto. <laughs> Yeah, especially now. Yeah, but let's go into the chapter summary, I would yes, say. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, Jordan, please tell us your wonderful plot. All right. So, David, this is uh, some interesting stuff because you see there's a there's a Catholic church. We know oh about my. them. And there's a Taoist church. And they're, like, right next to each other. You know, I mean, j you could probably just guess from, this fa from the fact that they're right next to each other, but they fucking hate each other. <laughs> uh, they hate each other so much almost like some kind of romeo juliet capulet montague story but talk about that later taiga bijogi is the youngest member of the bijogi family that owns the taoist church when trying to capture a photo of the ghost that supposedly hangs out on top of the church he meets anna the youngest daughter of the catholic sagiyamas and the sister of elsa that's not true he immediately falls in love but both their families forbid them from talking because they are not, you know, the, the, you know, I mean, look, I get it from the Taoist perspective because of those dirty Catholics, but you know, but anyway, there's a time skip six years pass and now they're, uh, they're attractive teenagers, of course, you know, cause this is manga. Uh, one day while aimlessly for no reason standing in a field, Taiga happens to catch Anna performing some kind of weird ritual popcorn, David. She kidnaps him and reveals that her church worships Marie Antoinette's daughter, Named Marie <laughs> Therese Charlotte. What the fuck? And, and her father decides to use Tyga as a sacrifice to revive Miss Charlotte. But when the ritual is performed, holy moly, he done got transformed into a girl. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> my first impression of this is you can 100% tell this is by the cop and dolphin guy because first of all, the art, very well done, very well polished. Not a single issue with the art. Not a single issue. It is solid. Second thing, this series fucking knows how tropey it is, and it really loves swinging with tropes, which we saw a lot in Cop and Dolphin, where he was like, I know every single stereotype about this comic in the book, and we're going to make fun of all of them in the first chapter and get it out of the uh way. I will say it got a little bit annoying in this one because it happens a lot. Like, they will yeah. do it, like, multiple times. Like, there are multiple parts where, like, uh, Taiga's just hanging out, and he meets his friend, and he sees some they see some new guys, and he's like, aren't those guys in the wrong manga? Yeah, that was a little on the nose. A little on the nose. There were a couple other instances of that kind of thing, and it's like, I feel like you could do one per chapter. Yeah. You do multiple ones, it's like, all right, guys, look, I mean, I am reading a fucking manga. I know it's a manga, <laughs> all right? Like, They're I, so I zany and meta. 
Yeah, like, whoa, guys, you didn't expect to see that in this manga. I'm the main <laughs> character. And yeah. even I think that's weird. Like, shit, yeah, shit like that. <laughs> that's fair. I mean, you can see he definitely got a lot of growing pains in this series. Because if we didn't say Cop and Dolphin, he did after this. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Though, don't forget, Cop and Dolphin had a pretty rough first chapter, too. Yeah, but that was rough for political reasons. It's true. That's true. I will say uh, the politics aren't as bad uh, this time yet. Yes. We, we, I mean, yeah. we're talking about I, there, I are, have there a are guess. things here that make me worry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, uh, you'll see what one of my guesses is about that. But also, really? Marie Therese Charlotte? <laughs> what a deep cut, right? What the fuck? Couldn't even be we worship Marie Antoinette. It's Marie Antoinette's weird daughter. Yeah. Who, I looked it up. She was technically the queen of France for 20 minutes. That's longer than my reign of 18 seconds. Hey, hey. See? Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I was the king of Italy for 20 years, but let's not yes, talk about that. You were that. actually the one who brought tomatoes to Italy, and that's why they made you king. Yeah, and then I forgot. Then I found out that like I was uh, copying my entire style from another dude named Zach, and then like that was a whole thing, but <laughs> don't worry about it. Oh, you, you know, I'm imagining though how this series would have been where instead of whatever they're doing right now, she takes over his body, so it's just Marie Antoinette's daughter as a teenage boy living in <laughs> contemporary Japan. You know what? I would be down for a series like that where it's like gender bender in the reverse yeah. situation. <laughs> oh, um, but I, I do also want to say the series is actually funny besides the tropiness. Like that yeah. panel <laughs> where her dad, what was it? It was like a patch came in and dad's just like, oh, is it porn? I actually laughed at that. I thought that was a pretty funny <laughs> panel for him to just say it like that. I liked the panel where, you know, he's aimlessly standing in the middle of the field. I don't know why he's there, but um, he sees her and she's just like performing some kind of ritual. And he's like, hello. And then she just looks at him and I don't know, like the, the reaction face she had was funny. You know, they, they did the anime reaction face. It was good. It was good. Like we said, the art definitely, I mean, it's not like something we haven't seen before, but it's definitely like very polished and well done, which you would expect from someone with this experience. I also liked they were planning on sacrificing like two raw chicken legs. Yeah. <laughs> and then they yeah. Said, oh shit, let's just sacrifice a guy. That's easier. Which makes me wonder what would have happened if they did the chicken legs with, would the chicken legs have just become a pretty girl or would yeah. the chicken leg, yeah, or the chicken legs would just have a dress on them. Ugh. maybe they'll show that. I think we missed out on a way more interesting manga, honestly. <laughs> We've already pitched two things the author could have done instead, which is weird because we still like this manga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> I, I guess, uh, unless you had more to say, but Jordan, would you read another 10 chapters of this? I'm down. I had no issues with this. This seems pretty fun. <laughs> you know, I feel like I don't fully get the whole premise yet, but that's okay. Yeah. Speaking of, though, what are your guesses? She gotta eat that cake like her mom says she should. Do you think she's got that cake? I don't know if she's got that cake. We'll find out. But she she got to eat it. Because, you know, her mom was like, you got to let him. Let, let, so let her eat cake. That's what I say. <laughs> the next one is Anna falls in love, but she's confused because she's a girl. What? You can't do that because I'm a member of the Catholic Church. You know, I'm oh, homophobic, oh, no. transphobic, Catholic nope. Church. Not good. Uh, the last one is Marie Therese is totally useless because what kind of fucking idiot worships the daughter of Marie Antoinette? They're not even fucking French. Like, who the fuck does that? What if, like, it's all about reincarnating people, French people named Marie, and, like, the villain is Marie Curie, and she uses her, like, radiation power? <laughs> that would happen in Hungry Joker. I was just gonna say Hungry <laughs> Joker. I, I think that did happen in Hungry Joker. <laughs> you know, uh, she's actually one of two people to have won two Nobel Prizes in different categories. Oh, who, who's yeah. the other person? I don't fucking remember, but I looked that up after Zipman because uh, the the brother oh, yeah. had done that, and I looked up to see if that's ever happened, and it's happened twice. I remember you bringing that up. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, if they worshipped Marie Curie, I would not be having this many questions. I gotta be honest. Yeah. It makes so much more sense to worship Marie Curie than it does Marie Therese Charlotte. I mean, as a chemist, she's very based. Oh, shut the fuck up, David. What are your guesses? <laughs> I love it. So mine first are... The main character will have some gimmick that turns him back to normal. Oh, like Ranma. Yeah, like Ranma or Don to Da Don. <laughs> yeah. There will be a lot of poorly handled LGBT themes, mm -hmm. and the dad will be the best character in the series. You know what? I am kind of seeing that, you know? I, I think that there's going to there's gonna be a lot of fun interactions between the dad and the grandma. Tiger's grandma, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Is that his grandma or grandpa? Because I thought they called her him grandpa, but I was thrown off by the long hair as well. Oh my god. I guess uh, not, uh, non-binary grandparent. <laughs> I am totally getting the sense that the dad is going to be the source of a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of good humor here. 
He's pretty good. We'll find out. David, but um, what's your power word? My word is egg. And I fought an egg for <laughs> quite a few reasons. <laughs> so, first of all, because of trans, trans egg. Second of yeah. all, because they were going to use a chicken. Oh, yeah. And third of all, Jordan, happy Easter, buddy. Aw, oh, thank you, David. And uh, for reference, for those who don't know, an egg is a term for a closeted trans person. Basically. I thought you were about to explain what Easter is. All right. So a long time ago, there was like this. Uh, there was this pagan solstice ritual called. God damn it. Yoster. Well, fuck it. It's Scott. What else? Fucking yeah. Anyway, my power word is cake because Marie Antoinette said, let there eat cake. And it Aww. doesn't really go deeper than that. Listen, that's understandable. Hey, cake is important. The cake is a lie. Oh, shut- no, Lil no, XD. I'm sorry. Cut, cut that out. I'm okay. cutting that out. The cake is a lie. It's very based. Anyway. Uh, that's that's the worst sentence you could have said. I'm going to cut that sentence out, and I'm going to make sure everybody says it. I'm going to release it as a Dylan, main episode. Dylan, don't you cut that. Don't you cut that, and you send me this audio so I can put it back in when Jordan cuts it. Dylan, do not cut out David saying the cake is a lie is totally based, because I want that shame forever. I have no shame. And you know who else doesn't have shame? That sounds like a question, David. Uh, Are you asking for an answer? I am, so let's do some Q&As. <gasps> As a reminder, we have a channel in our Discord where you can post questions. Do not have to be a patron of any sort. Just answer them, though. Being a patron does give you priority to be answered, but we usually prioritize people that haven't asked. So let's get into it. First question from Second 44. Why do you think that mangaka steal slash get inspired by more popular contemporaries without really understanding what made it popular and good in the first place? Dude, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. You're going to make a manga. What are you going to do? Do you know how to make a manga? How do you learn to make a manga? You make a manga. You learn how to do something by looking at the successful versions of it that other people have already made. It's really easy to sit there and be like, huh, why don't people just not copy each other? But like in practice, it's like, well, you got to do something. Yeah. And not only that, but you're trying to target a very specific market. So it's like, well, yeah. How do I do that? <laughs> I mean, there's also a very famous quote from oh, yes. Nobel Prize winning artist Thomas Jefferson. As he said, good artists borrow, <laughs> great artists steal. Oh, yes. My favorite Cubist artist, uh, Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, I think he said that right before he made Space Jam, so it made sense. <laughs> anyway, next question from Xylon, who asks, how did you guys get into anime and specifically manga in the first place? Well, I was born in the end. Yes. Molded by it. Didn't talk to girls in high school, so what else are you going to do? <laughs> I remember being like six years old and just like my cousin was like, hey, I got this Pokemon VHS. And I was like, well, I don't I've seen commercials for Pokemon. It looks kind of stupid, but whatever, I'll watch it. And then I watched. It, I was like, oh, my God, that was the best thing I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. And after that, you know, that was I mean, it's also Toonami, man. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Toonami. Yeah, that's when I was done. Like, I was yeah. absolutely after that. Like, no, I, I watched G Gundam on Toonami. My friend, actually, I saw him in D.C. He has a G Gundam tattoo, which was pretty sick. That's awesome. Yeah, actually, uh, Jamal in the group chat. <laughs> oh, he has a King of Hearts tattoo. I was just going to say, I bet it's a King of Hearts tattoo. That's a great tattoo yeah. idea, actually. And then, Fuck, Jamal, if you're listening, you're a cool dude. And I yeah. am honored that you made a picture I took of you, your profile picture. Oh, that's awesome. I'm honored that you have the King of Hearts tattoo. Undefeated of the East. The school of the undefeated of the East. Ultimate. Secret technique. Sekiya. Tekiyoken. <laughs> Look, the East is burning red! <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Gundam rules. I'm God. so mad that they that it was a one-off series and they didn't keep making more. Yeah, but then they made Gurren Lagann. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, Gurren Lagann is kind of the best example of a successor to G Gundam. Anyway, the successor to this question is also great. From Yaji Black, are there any writing tropes slash decisions that you think are indicate of a flop and that should always try to be avoided? I mean, an exam arc. Yeah, an exam arc, especially early on. Likewise, I really don't like flashbacks in the first chapter because it just feels like you had structural issues. Yeah. I think also, as we talked about, I know Jordan doesn't mind as much, but I still really hate when characters exist just for the plot. You know, like Dragon Ball Z did good, but Dragon Ball Z was also 30 years ago. We've definitely evolved past it. Like Dragon Ball Z would not have held up to the standards of today. I think that Dragon Ball Z became a manga that is legitimately very good. And Dragon Ball did too. Yeah. I mean, the reason why there's a tournament arc in Dragon Ball is because it was about to fall. It was about to flop. <laughs> yeah. 
I also think, like, making characters that are visibly ugly, evil, like, you know, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it's just... It's all stupid, or, uh, I mean, anything that has to do with sexualizing and objectifying women is always a sign that a series is probably terrible. Although Gurren Lagan. Gurren Lagan, or, <laughs> I was thinking of Debonair Diamond again, where he really, I it's I, I don't think there's any precedent. That was a combination of, like, a sexualization and a power fantasy with Debonair Diamond. That is a little more complicated. There was a little bit more to that. I legitimately think if the offer was, like, can I make a Debonair? like prequel series they'd be like just go for it yeah i don't think there's ever been a precedent of that though if he made a series that was debonair and grim just teaming up that he'd rule the fucking world all right uh, so next up is a question from generic man who asks i'm trying to find a microphone you guys recommend in the google form you linked but i can't find the link anymore so what microphone do y'all recommend and for context he is referring to the fact that we on our site have a form that you can enter if you would like to be a guest we are trying to make it that every quarter so every three months we definitely are going to pick someone up our totally awesome love rush episode had our first guest on ash and that was a lot of fun so we're really excited to have more people from the community being on the show yeah so jordan what mic do you use i use a borrowed blue yeti it is actually my parents friends blue yeti and i'm terrified that one day he's gonna ask for it back but he hasn't done that (laughs) david what do you use i use a samson q2 that is my favorite mic it's only like 80 bucks sometimes it's on sale for 60 love it i've been using it since the start of the show and i don't think there's been any need for me to particularly upgrade i really like it because it actually both supports usb and standard audio so if you have a more advanced setup, you can still continue to use the same microphone without having to be limited by the fact that it's a USB port. Yes. That was a good question, though. Uh, I always enjoy having podcast-related questions. And if you're interested in podcasting, I have an entire guide called the Shonen Flop Audacity Editing Guide. You can find it on our site as well. Or if you send me a message, I will send you a link to it. It's literally what we edit the show using. And then finally, though, speaking of podcasters, and I think this is a first-time question asker from Vampiraptor, someone who we're going to be on their show, so it might actually be out by the time you're hearing this episode depending Ooh. you can check out his show it's pretty great do you guys think that reading all these flops have lowered the bar of quality you expect from regular reading material you know what a little bit <laughs> like sometimes I'll, I'll go back and read a real like a popular manga and i'll be like oh my god some quality yeah this is on a different level like i read goodbye airy by like uh, fujimoto recently i was just like god this is just so good i mean also it's because it's very good and it's i mean it's also fujimoto, fujimoto. <laughs> it's also literally fuji but like no you get it though like it's a it's such a like i went from school judgment to goodbye airy like yeah <laughs> so there is a huge jump in quality here like right i would have liked goodbye airy a lot anyway but <laughs> yeah <laughs> came yeah. off it's really good after that We've also learned how bad bad manga can be because remember when we thought Zipman was like near the bottom, like quarter, yeah. and we've realized it's more like in the middle, like the 50th percentile. It's more like almost not a flop. Actually, you know, Jordan, in about a month, we're going to do our re-ranking list, so we'll see how every series falls before we do our Golem Hearts revisit. Mm. So keep an ear out for that one, listeners. But yeah, I'm with you. Also, Jordan, though, I think we have a little bit extra time. So what would you say? Which do you think is stronger, Look Back or Goodbye Airy? Okay, so here's the thing. I think that overall, it's probably Look Back. Yeah. But I really liked Goodbye, Aerie. Because here's the thing. Look, people are like, oh, well, Fujimoto had all this fucking time. Why wasn't he working on Chainsaw Man? No, here's the thing. I could tell exactly what was going on with Goodbye, Aerie. Because Goodbye, Aerie, he uses 3D models. He yeah. just doesn't use that with, like, anything else. And I could tell, okay, this is something that Fujimoto made using this technique so that he could work on Chainsaw Man, I'm assuming. But what's more than that, he uses the fact that he doesn't have to re- draw the same panel all the time to use a lot of examples of repetition Mm -hmm. which winds up really helping with how that series trying to do it makes it feel more like there's things happening in real time it feels more like a film and that's kind of what the series is getting at i I really enjoyed it yeah but i do think that look back is a more polished i guess more of a masterpiece but I think Look Back is perhaps the finest 140 pages of manga I've ever read in my entire life. Goodbye, Eri is good, but he was definitely a lot more experimental, and I think there are experiments he tried that just didn't work. Yeah, Goodbye, Eri was much more of an experiment. I think it was great. I really like it. The more I think about it, the more I like it more. I really enjoy the ending. It's very interesting what he was doing there in terms of of story structure and fucking with your perception of what you're reading and stuff like that. I think that was so awesome, but yeah. Yeah, but that's all the time we have for questions today. Hopefully we will do a special on Goodbye Airy. We are trying to find like the right guest for it. So keep an ear out for that. But yeah, and then Jordan, I think all that's left is to go to shout outs. Yeah. So first shout, shout, out. shout, shout, shout it, it all out. out. 
These are the people I can't do without. I'm actually surprised it's taking you that Patreon. <laughs> you I'm talking to you. You should have saved that Patreon. for the Patreon reading. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but first of all, Jordan, I, I want to thank you for editing this TV episode. You're welcome. I also want to give props to Shannon for the awesome cover art. You can find her online at Illuminati. Thanks to Tucker for assistance with pronunciation, translation, and other miscellaneous research. Thanks to Luke for being our community producer. You can find his work at LukeHair.com. Thanks to T-Root, Ozzy Rat, and T-Wolfwood for being our awesome transcription volunteers. And then Jordan, is there anything you want to add? Look! The East is burning red! But also thank you, David, <laughs> for <laughs> editing. Undefeated of the East! <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> the winds of kings! <laughs> You can find us on Twitter at Shonen Flopcast and our website ShonenFlop.com. We're also on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, or wherever else you get your podcasts. And as we talked about before, come join us on the Shonen Flop Discord. It's open to everyone. You don't have to be a patron, but we do have some exclusive patron stuff. Come hang out with us, talk about anime games or whatever else is on your mind. We even have a comic book book club, and we have a monthly movie night where we're going to be watching the Blues Brothers. Yeah! And if you've been enjoying the podcast and want to help us keep going, consider subscribing to our Patreon. We have a ton of awesome perks like bonus episodes on Magu Chan, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, and BPPPPP. You could even be joining us during the pre- pre-show warm-up or listening to us recording right now you can find that at patreon.com slash shonen flop and on that note i want to read off our amazing patrons first of all i want to give thank you to our chainsaw man patrons pterodactyl ghost and want to go have on a baby then we have our first ever dolphin dad patron tracking roving animals for all loving girls and raccoons wolfwood then moving down to the king of the forest we have albie cameron h gabe lando jacob andrew galloway josh robinson mark marty rachel my lovely girlfriend scarlet mirmanin solman martinez t the bb king bb the and then and moving down to the Galactic Ball Federation officers, we have Blah Moo Moo, BS, Dolphin, Dylan Kreider, Eric Alex Klein, Generic Man, Hans, Kylie Denton, Mara Barra, Mike Carpenter, Sarah Hydra, Shingi Sangamoto, Silly Rookie, Simping for Senpai Ash, Staghorn, That One Welder Guy, Trevor Schechner, and Yaji Black. Thank you all so much. I truly appreciate all the support you've been giving us on the show. Yes, thank you so much. We are getting closer and closer to our goal. Are only about fifty dollars away from being able to do a special episode on Basketball Grandma, the manga I wrote, <laughs> and also means we can hire Dylan for more editing time. So we're going to be able to do bigger and more polished episodes as Dylan is, will be able to help me more with the editing. That's right, guys. So if you want me to make David cry by tearing apart his manga, just keep on subscribing. Yes, it's, uh, five pages of basketball playing grandma goodness you do not what want to is miss this it. fucking writing a fucking idiot wrote this look at this <laughs> somebody who, who who doesn't deserve to have friends wrote this fucking manga look at this <laughs> all right but thank you so much for listening tune in next monday for our full episode on hungry marie where we are joined by the legendary rem from anime out Woo! of context yeah! revenge for him finally yes yes will they get into another 40 minute fight where i go get food and come back most likely will we we might you absolutely will not because i have to edit this i mean hey he just has to be careful what he says we won't do that now it's on him is what i'm saying all so. right but jordan enough of that say your line well actually david uh i think uh um... no we're not talking about school judgment anymore well in that case i, I guess there's really nothing else to do david fucking stop keep on flopping floppers bye bye Ha, ha, ha.